Well, as you can see, we've got some snow. It is January 23rd, and this is probably our third snowfall this year. We've got about five or six inches of snow, no big deal. It is wet and heavy, and it's slippery, and it's, the temperature is right around that. Well, it's in the 30s anyways. So what we're going to be doing to this 900 is we have to change out the hydraulic valve that's on it. Now, oh, it had to be 10, 11 years ago when I mounted this valve. I mounted it in on the frame rail. It's sitting in there on its side and conspicuously out of the way. So we're gonna go ahead and redo that. The reason why I put it in the frame rail, I didn't want it hanging out here anywhere, but we are going to, well, I don't know what side of the frame rail I'm gonna put it on, because I only have this much real estate here. So we're gonna get that off in there. I don't remember what kind of valve that is, but it's not the valve assembly that we're used to using. And for a short time there, we couldn't get the commercial valves and we had to put something else on there and they just don't work as good as the commercial valve. So we did have this truck in the shop a couple, two, three weeks ago. We put tires on it. We put the quiet exhaust back on there. We had this um, fuel tank fixed. They got that mounted back on there but we didn't have time to screw around with this valve assembly, which is bolted right here. So we're gonna get the catwalks off, get all our hoses off of there, get it drained, pull that unit off in there. I'll see if I can see an ID tag on it or not, but we'll see what kind it is. And that's gonna go in the scrap barrel and we'll kind of describe the hydraulic system that I currently have on this now and what we're going to somewhat change it to. It's gonna be doing the same jobs, but we're gonna we're gonna do something a little different with the way we uh, normally, or have plumbed these road tractors. So we're gonna get this one done and then hopefully we can get working on the Western Star next. But um, I thought I would blow the snow off of this just so that we wouldn't have a big puddle on the floor it would have been ideal to have brought this in the shop before it snowed or it'd be nice if we had everything inside why don't we put everything inside well we don't have storage enough to put everything inside so we've got the catwalk removed and now you can see this valve body assembly a little better since the uh, catwalk is removed, before we pull that off, we'll go ahead and get a hydraulic flow and pressure reading off of it. We got this from Hainsworth. Uh, this is something that he put together. This will read hydraulic flow, gallons per minute, and it'll also read the maximum amount of pressure that this truck is putting out. This valve body assembly um, is weak. We know it's weak, but we just want to get a reading on it. More or less a before and after uh, reading here. So they got the 9560 in here. You can see that in the background. All they're doing to that is they're just going through it, getting all the lights working on it. Uh, they've got the cab roof removed. They're gonna blow all the crap, dust out of the area above the cab, get that cleaned up. And we're just uh, doing little tiny odds and ends, um, getting this stuff going. He had a tail light here that was full of water, fixing that, just some other odds and ends in case you were wondering. So let's go ahead and get this gauge hooked up and we'll see what we're putting out for uh, pressure here on this current system that we're running. All right, we've got this gauge hooked up. And the way I have this truck and uh, C5 hooked up, 
I have a single valve on there and then we also have a power beyond on the outlet cover of the actual valve body assembly. So we've got one single acting valve on this truck that is a motor spool. In other words, it's meant to run just a hydraulic motor. Uh, you wouldn't be able to run a truck hoist with it because once you shut the hydraulic flow off to the valve, the hoist would come back down because it's the valve is more or less open. So we had to set up to run a manure trailer and a live bottom trailer. Uh, when we ran the live bottom trailer, we ran out of the power beyond. It was mainly set up for just the Aulic trailer. The Aulic trailer's got its own valve body uh, on it. When the hydraulic valve is running out of the power beyond, it's running off of the um, pressure, uh, the pressure relief on the valve itself. So there's a pressure relief on the inlet cover and that is set at say 3500 PSI on this valve. We also have a port relief on the hose coming out of the single acting valve and I've got that set at like 2750. So we're gonna put a different setup on there and we'll explain that when we go to put it on. We basically want to see what this setup is putting out for pressure and um, flow. So go ahead and dial her up. That, what are you doing? You're just idling? All right, so he's idling right there and we are at 20 gallons of flow. Give it a little, give it a little throttle. You're at 20 gallons of flow. So right now he is pushing, he's pushing 50, 40, 45. Give it all it's got. So we're maxing out at 50. going now we're gonna see what we've got for pressure so that's pushing 3,000 pounds of pressure 3,500 pounds of pressure and it's walking down yeah we got a leak there now but it's walking down around 42 to 45 We've got a leak right there. We're gonna have to address. All right. So we are pushing, pushing 4,000 psi, 3,800 psi at about 40, 40, nah, maybe 42 to 43 gallons a minute. So we've got something that's loose here. We'll get that tightened up. We're gonna go ahead and jump over onto uh, the other side of this valve, which we're gonna be working out of the single acting motor spool valve that's on this valve bank. Uh, we have not been able to run out of the valve. You've been running out of power beyond for manure and uh, manure and the moss trailer because there's been something wrong with that work section uh, on this valve assembly. So let's go ahead and jump over to our other uh, ports here. All right, now we have switched the gauge assembly around. We're returning oil through the same spot we were before. However, we are gonna be grabbing pressurized oil, which is hooked to this line here, off of the single uh, single acting work port on this valve assembly here. Um, the problem with this setup, on the power beyond, you have to have a loop here. So we have to make sure we can return that oil 
off of the power beyond. So this is the power beyond port here, pressurized oil coming back through the system and it's able to return here right back into the systems come back comes back around goes back into the tank why i did that way did it that way i don't know but at any rate that's how we did it and it lasted for 10 years uh, we do have a problem with this valve we're not sure what it could be it could just be that this uh work section relief might be bad but Again, I don't like these valves. I want to change it over anyways. What I want to put on here is we really only need one valve, but I'm going to put two valves on there. I'd like to have a, a double acting cylinder valve that we could potentially run a uh, dump trailer with someday. And a dump trailer is single acting. We would just rip that return line from it right back into the tank and return the oil back to the tank so jared's gonna go ahead and start it up now and we're gonna see what we have for hydraulic flow out of the actual work section it's just got a handle on it right here which is hooked we've got an air control hooked on to it and he can run that valve from up inside the cab. So we'll go ahead and let him dial her up here. Yeah, go ahead. Are you engaged? Your handle's engaged? Yeah, the handle is stuck. Which way has it got to go? All right, it's that way. Is that, hit, hit the air control. All right, hold, hold up a second. I gotta, we're gonna have to zip tie that. All right, so we've got that lever held with a ratchet strap. We haven't used it so long that the air control is screwed up or something. All right, right now at an idle, we are at uh 18 gallons a minute and about 700 psi go ahead so right there he is about at the same rpm on the engine as we were before we're running at 20 23 2400 psi and we're hardly crowding uh, 30 gallons a minute so that is maxed out on the actual work section give it a little more so that's max that's wide open gain maybe 100 psi and didn't gain any hydraulic flow all right that's good and that has built some heat right there you can see some steam coming off of those lines right there we ran this that's only been 30 seconds so if he was trying to offload a load of manure that oil is just we don't know what it's doing inside that uh valve right there um it did 30 gallons a minute and it did 22 2300 psi so what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to check out the actual Gemini system next. I don't know when we're going to do that, but we'll have to see how the Gemini system does that Hainsworth builds. He actually put that system on the uh, White Peterbilt. So we did somewhere right around 44 to 45 gallons per minute on high pressure. We were crowding 50 when we didn't crank the pressure down on it uh when we were running right out of the uh, power beyond 
So we'll get this valve ripped apart and at some point we will check the Gemini system that is on the Peterbilt. So you can see a little bit of steam coming off of everything here and we would have overheated this system had we have been trying to unload a load of manure or um, a load of silage. It probably wouldn't even push off a load of silage. It wouldn't push a load of silage on that, would it? Yeah, but if you pressure's pressure though, if you had that at 2200, it's not working any harder than if it was pumping more. No, but um, I don't think it would push off a load of manure at 2200. Or a, a load of silage. Oh, yeah, it wouldn't push off a load of silage. So let's get to working on this and we will join up with you once we get things tore apart. And at some point here, we are going to check out the Gemini. Well, so that we can keep kind of all of the uh, flow ratings in one spot on this video, we decided to come up to where we had this white. Peterbilt Park. Now this had a Gemini system put on by Hainsworth. We've got our system hooked up here. and We're going to go ahead and try it. So why don't you jump up in there, Jared? Now this is a double acting valve here. So I don't know if we're going to be going the right way yet with it first, but we might go the wrong way with it first. All right, engage. The PTO is engaged. There it goes there, he's getting, he's got it. Hydraulic pump is engaged. We're only running at about 34, 34 gallons a minute at 2,000 PSI. If I crank the pressure down, increase the pressure, it drops the gallons per minute right down. dropping back on pressure we're down to 2000 we did creep up more to 40 but it can't handle if i give it the pressure i lose gallons per minute if i decrease the pressure i lose i get gallons per minute but i lose uh pressure so if we wanted to be at, say, 2,500, 2,700 PSI, we're running around 32 gallons a minute. So it doesn't quite do as good as the system that we have on the 900. so we'll take this over and we'll hook it up to the c5 and see what we get out of that so this one didn't do quite what the 900 did we've got a weak system on the c5 as well but um we're hoping to address that at some point here All right, now we're hooked up to the C5. Now this C5 is basically set up just about like the 900. We're running out of the power beyond on this other side. We have to have this loop hose in there because we need to make sure we're returning oil when we're not plugged into uh, those hoses on that side. This valve body assembly is mounted on the other side of the frame on this truck here when i set this one up half a dozen years ago i put a double acting motor spool valve we can run forward and reverse and that's what you want for a manure tanker you want to be able to run that you want to be able to have the ability to run that pump in reverse if you get a stone lodge you want to run it backwards quick and then run it forward again so go ahead get the pto engaged and uh got the pto engaged he is he's got the go ahead he's got the uh valve on it's running crank it up 
Crank it. So he is running 2,000 PSI. This one's weak too. So if I, this one's worse than the Peterbilt out of the actual valve body itself, which we were weak on the valve body on the um, 900 as well. Uh, wind it up. So we're not quite, right around 2,000 PSI, 32 gallons a minute. Okay, so now we're gonna unhook. We're gonna hook into the power beyond side. All right, now we are hooked up on the power beyond side. And we'll see how this does. We haven't had the greatest luck with this one. We've had some problems with this system. Go ahead. He's got the PTO engaged and he's giving her some RPM and we're running at almost 2,000, 1850 to 1900 PSI at 42 gallons a minute. We can go ahead and crank the pressure down and we lose gallons per minute. So we've got to do something with this valve body on this as well. So we might as well get down to the shop, start changing out the 900, and we'll see how we do with that. But this valve body on this is the same kind of valve body that the 900 has. So we'll get this unhooked and get back down to the shop. Well, we have all of our lines unhooked that went to the valve body. We got the valve body removed. Now Jared's just trying to get this bracket that I had made and stuffed into the frame rail there. He's gonna get that out and then we're gonna go ahead and fabricate something for this side of the frame to put the new valve assembly on. This is the valve body here over on the floor. I'm gonna pull the air control off of it. We've pulled most of the fittings out except for this one here. And then we will go ahead and just throw this right in the trash bucket. So this is what we're gonna put on this truck in place of the valve assembly that was on there prior. What I have to do is I have to pull out one of these spools I haven't decided which one. I guess it's going to be this one here. So we've got to remove the air control. Remove the air control. Before we're going to do that, we're going to reach in, grab this nut or little Allen screw, take it out of the end of the actual spool itself. So this is a valve spool here, or a cylinder spool rather. And that's what both of these valves have in them. And we're gonna switch it with a motor spool. We'll run the hydraulic uh, valve motor off of this valve here. And then someday if we have a dump trailer, we can run off of this valve. We're gonna be double acting. We're just gonna have to return uh, one of these ports back to tank so we can make a single acting valve out of it. So I've had this valve on the shelf for a little while here. This does have a power beyond outlet cover. We're just going to have to return the pressurized oil back to tank. We'll have to return that in a loop and uh, we'll go ahead and get this set up here. So we'll remove the air control. We've got to dive duck into this air control here.
this in there and place it off down. I've got to get some Loctite to put in here so that we can get this screw to go in it and it stays in one place. All right, we've got that uh, motor spool switched, or spool that is, and uh, we just need to build a platform in order to mount it to the frame. We're going to use these bolts right here. We've got two that hold the cross member and two that are just kind of... In there, we'll go ahead and make a bracket, mount the valve onto it, and then we'll have to put all of our hoses over. Well, they'll have to come kind of underneath and around. It's, it's just going to be kind of a goofed up mess here, but we'll have to kind of build it as we go here. Well, we've got the 7290 in here, and this tractor we ended up breaking the windshield it was actually last year cutting hay and the neighbor down the road's got to come put a new windshield in it tomorrow and we're having to strip everything off the front end I had to pull the exhaust which that weighs a few hundred pounds anyways a couple hundred we pulled it off with a forklift and there's just a couple of things to remove yet on this left hand side got to remove the air box the grab handle the mirror and you can see we've got a spider crack a pretty good sized one right on the windshield a stone come off off the front mower and crack the windshield so no fun takes half a day just to get the tractor ready to replace the window hopefully it doesn't happen again think about it the last tractor we had a windshield break on was this tractor right next door this tractor was brand new and something flew off or come out from the engine or something like a a nut or a bolt or something got kicked back from the fan we were thinking and it shattered the windshield when it was brand new that was 21 or two years ago or three years ago so yeah well we've got things some things removed here we've got some other work to do here yeah i'm having second thoughts about putting this valve body on the side of the frame that's where we put them on the side the the 10 wheelers but um i think we're actually going to put this one up on top that's what hainsworth does with his um if i'm going to put it up on top though I'm gonna end up putting these fittings here right on the actual valve body itself. I don't really like that idea, but um, I think these will break out of the valve just as easy as they can out of here. So in other words, I'm hoping that we don't 
uh, end up hurting the valve at all if, in fact, one of these hoses gets caught on something. But if we put this valve body up here, we'll have less hoses and whatever to deal with. If I put it on this frame rail, we're going to have to go over the top with the hoses like this and hook them up. And then that is going to conflict with the catwalk we put on here. If we put this valve upside down and run the hoses up, up and under, that'll work, but this valve will be mounted upside down, which is no big deal. So we might just mount this up on top, put these fittings right direct on the valve itself, and then we've got that many less hoses to deal with. So I think we're going to go that route they have this 7290 stripped down and they ought to be able to get the windshield put into it here later on today. They've got to cut the old one out that's got that polyurethane glue that holds that in. So that'll have to get all trimmed off of there and then uh, put the new one in there. So we've got lights and wipers and whatever that we're going to go ahead and get done on this mixer wagon tractor and just a little service is all. That's why that's in here and you're going to hear grinding and whatever in the background and what they're doing is they are rebuilding alley scraper trucks and plows. So we've got the trucks here. I put the cable hooks into and we put a half inch by six skid plate underneath them and that rides on top of the floor and it kind of protects the bottom of the sled. If you didn't have those skid plates on there, these sleds would be right out and gone. These are the cable winches here. The cable goes in one end from one side and the other end from the other side and this is how you tighten uh, the cable up. It's got a ratchet style winder. You wind the cable around uh, this piece here and that's what tightens the uh, cable up. So we're going to go back over and get some things, more things tore apart on this and we'll have to construct a plate to bolt this guy to and um, go from there, I guess. Well, I'm getting ready to cut a piece of steel to mount this valve body on top of the frame. And what I have is a piece of 12 inch channel iron here. I need at least like nine and three quarters inches between the bolt holes going front to back in other words from here to there and the 10 inch channel that i had it just wasn't enough so i grabbed this piece of 10 inch or 12 inch what we're going to do is we're going to cut the legs off here this is going to set on top of the frame rail this will set on top of the frame rail set down in and then we'll drill a couple of holes here put some tabs in underneath the kind of clamp this to the frame and then what we can do is just set the valve body on top of it drill a three holes and mount it right to uh, this channel iron i'm going to go ahead and cut this with this titanium plasma cutter you guys don't see this getting used all that much and i thought i would use it on uh, this job here. Usually I would just use a set of torches, but when I got set up to cut this, Jared was using the propane torches on doing some work on the frame on this truck. He's changing some airbag tubes around. And Jason was using the acetylene torches on the project they had going on next door. So we'll go ahead and cut this out quickly and use the titanium plasma cutter. Now this plasma cutter here I bought a couple years ago because I was my hypotherm uh, plasma cutter went down. This is a Harbor Freight Special. 
it's like seven or eight hundred bucks and it does a decent job it's a it's more or less a an economy model um, i don't know how well it would work if you had to call on it every day but um, so far it's been working uh, pretty good for us We just changed out the consumables, and now we're going to go out and try this again. Well, I don't usually use a plasma cutter to do this, but I thought I would kind of demonstrate how it works, and that didn't work too good. That unit is, has a half inch maximum. Well, maybe not a half inch, but it, it likes to work slightly under a half an inch, and right where that web is the thickest is about a half an inch. So it cut pretty decent on this thinner part of the leg. Now we're going to go ahead and just use the torch. It's what I usually call on for something like this anyways. My hypertherm plasma cutter that I have, I need consumables for it. I got the consumables, but there's a little plastic like diffuser that sits in the nozzle that I have lost. So I've got to get one of them. That probably would have walked right through this. But again, uh, I thought I would try the titanium. So we'll go ahead and cut this with the propane oxygen torch here.
Well, we got our glass man here pulling this old window out. This, this Chad is a neighbor of ours. What he's doing is he's cutting the glue off of the other side of the window where it's glued to the actual frame of the tractor. He'll cut that all out, get the old window out, and then what he'll do is he'll clean everything up and then glue the new piece of glass in. This windshield here, it's the only window in the tractor that has that stuff in it, kind of like a windshield in a car to where it won't shatter on you. My brother was cutting hay. It was, I want to say it was July of 2021. So it's been 15, 16 months uh, since this is broke. It has had a couple other cracks go across it. But for the most part, it's, it's held pretty good. So it's just glued all the way around the perimeter. And it takes quite a bit to cut that glue off he'll get that cleaned up like i said then he'll come in with some suction cups on the new window after he puts the new polyurethane glue down glue it into place let it sit a while and then i don't know 24 hours or so it'll be set up like it should be but it took quite a bit to get ready to do this job we had to remove the muffler, the, everything off of either corner post of the cab, just so that when it comes time for him to set it into place, he can get it set in there. Um, I hope that that heat shield is out of the way. It should be able to go right in there. Well, we are into the next day now. I had to go to Charlotte's basketball game, which was an away game in Cato last night. And they've got this windshield all in there. It took them a couple hours to get it in. They got everything cleaned up, put new glue on there. And as you can see, they've got the new glass in there. The guy that put the window on, he's a neighbor of ours. He's actually the guy that we helped get his excavator out here a couple of years ago so that looks nice to have that in there hopefully that doesn't happen again we were afraid to put the new one in because we figured it would just happen again uh, it happened you know 15 16 months ago so it got all of this past year's hay we cut with it and a couple of cuttings from uh, last year, this window was $1,100, and um, you don't want to do too many of them. So we're going to get back into working on this uh, valve body, putting that on and getting it installed on this 900 here, and then they can start putting this tractor back together here and get that out, and then they've got couple other ones that they're gonna pull in and do lights and wipers on and servicing and whatever else like that no waxing but um, just mechanical stuff so let's get to it well they're getting all the goodies back on this 7290 they've just about got it wrapped up quite a job getting everything out of the way just so you can put a windshield in but we'll show you what progress we've made on this 900 I have gotten as far as I'm gonna go on it because I have decided to do things a little differently here and kind of waiting for parts so this had a couple of flat bars on there I had one that had the four different uh, hose fittings on and then we had the valve in the frame decided to put the valve body up on top of the frame here I removed both of those pieces that were going across the frame that held the pogo stick and the uh, valve for the air hoses that go back to the trailer and then there's a trailer plug here so on and so forth 
so we have removed that stuff we've got this 12 inch channel iron on here that's going to be bolted down to the frame the valve body is going to look a little different than this this outlet cover has a power beyond port on it which if i use power beyond that i've got to return uh this port here that's supposed to go back to tank along with power beyond i've got to return those two back to tank and then we've got the front valve which is set up for a dump trailer if we get a dump trailer someday if i use this double acting valve then i have to run this back to tank too so that when you go into the down position um you're not running this port here against the relief which is not in the inlet cover yet because we've got to get that in there and whatever so i have ordered a different outlet cover it just has a tank return on it it doesn't have a power beyond on there and i've got a single acting uh valve for the hoist so we can pop this apart i want to take this off get it painted and then uh set the valve on get everything onto it then paint the valve and so on and so forth so we basically got to take this stuff apart anyways now you're probably wondering why are you why do you have the wrong parts well i buy this stuff as i see it online and there's been a uh there's been quite a few of them out there that have had the power beyond outlet cover on them uh, sometimes they've got two sections in them, four, six, whatever. On this application, we only need two sections. We really only need one. But if I get a dump trailer someday, I might as well have it set up for that. The other trucks, the ones that we want to run manure with or a silage truck, we usually run three on a silage truck that has the rails on there so that we can run the winch off of the other valve now i've plumbed them the same with power beyond outlet covers and you get into a lot of screwing around with t's and extra fittings and hoses and it's just it's going to look a lot neater just having the one pressure line coming in on the front side and a return coming out the back so with that being said that's going to do it for uh this video i'm going to strip that stuff down paint that 12 inch channel in the next day or two i should see the parts for that valve and then what we're going to be doing next is we're going to pull in the uh western star which is waiting to come in uh jared has uh been working on getting this engine out of this frame here now this was well this is what is left to that old fld 120 that he had that freight liner this is a 30 uh 36 3406 b cat engine what have you got plans to do does this need rebuild or no kind of kind of kind of needs a rebuild what he's going to do, this has got a big snowplow frame on it. He just got done taking the steer axle out from underneath it. When he junked that truck, he cut the frame right here, took the engine out as a whole. He, the transmission's still sitting outside. He unbolted the transmission, yanked it out with a log chain. He had this for sale and we had this guy come and look at it. He came about three or four times to look at the truck and boy, he couldn't decide if it was going to be this or that or whatever. And Jared, stop fine. I, you don't want to make up your mind. I'm just going to, I'll keep the engine. I mean, if anything else, it's a good core, but he's going to go through it and have it ready uh, for the Mac. I know some of you have asked about the Mac that that's running um we're just not using it currently here's the steering shaft so we've got a bent steering shaft that happened when he uh took the cab off but this um these 30 3406bs are a good engine and uh yeah 
So he's gonna make some kind of an engine stand out of this just to kind of hold the engine in place while he screws around with them. Uh, working in a truck tire is uh, not ideal. So that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank you for watching and we'll catch you to next one. Thank you.